Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. God bless you. Today I have a prophecy. This prophecy I received the same as the one that I put up yesterday. I received it March the 9th, 2022, which was just yesterday. And by the grace of God, I will be able to approach this prophetic word with care because this is the type of prophetic word where no matter how it is delivered, it is bound to cause, it is bound to cause consternation. It is bound to cause wondering. It is bound to cause some kind of reaction in the human heart because of the content that it contains. I shared yesterday that the Lord gave me two prophecies at the same time in the morning of March the 9th. And one of them was a natural prophecy. That prophecy was concerning the rise of Russia and the fall of the United States. And I said that the other prophecy was supernatural. And so this prophecy puts me back firmly in the supernatural series that I am currently doing here on the master's voice. Before I go any further, please like these videos and please share them for the sake of this YouTube algorithm. That is, that is the way that a lot of people are coming here. A lot of people are finding this channel by the sovereign grace of God, because as we share and as we give a like, it is not because the content is pleasant on, obviously, I don't, I don't think that, but it is because this is a good way to get this channel shared so that more people can come. And the cause for more people coming is not so they can come and follow celestial, but so that they can hear the words of the Lord. That is the tagline of the master's voice. The Master's Voice End Times Prophecy Blog. Hear the words of the Lord. It is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking here, raising things that are understandable and sometimes not understandable, known and sometimes being revealed newly to his body, but also to anyone. Even if you are not a Christian, you are welcome here. As long as you have a heart that is open and a mind that is willing to at least listen to what the words of the Lord are. And so today's prophecy is not an easy one for several reasons. The topic is not easy. It is firmly in the supernatural, but also because whenever these prophecies involve me, whenever the Lord uses me as the example in these prophecies, I'm always less interested and much more reluctant to share them because I don't know, that is just not my flow to share things about myself. But here we go. The topic is the iron mixed with clay, the mighty men. So before we even start, I'm letting you know that this prophecy is involving the fact that we are not the only people who live on this planet. If you are new to the master's voice and you've never heard this, we are not the only people who lived on this, on this planet. There are other creatures here with us. And some of those creatures, they don't actually occupy our environment. So some of the creatures that I've been speaking about, such as these large and hairy beasts and dog creatures, dog mixed with man and wolf mixed with man, those kinds of things, some of them are naturally occurring and then they live out in the further regions of wherever. I know for a fact that they live here. The Lord has spoken to me about them living here in the United States and how in the end times they will become so bold that they will even come into populated areas like cities and take people, eat people, and they'll be finding those mangled bodies. Some of them are made with experiments. So the Lord did show me one of these, uh, a fully hairy creature standing upright that looked exactly like a wolf, except that it had human eyes. And I could see sadness in the eyes of this wolf when the Lord showed it to me because this thing had the thinking ability of a person and yet it was being kept underground and wasn't able to come out. So these are some of the creatures, but there are creatures in the sea. There are creatures that live in the higher places, like way up in the mountains that will all make what I have often referred to in writing on the blog as a huge reveal, a huge debut. These things will be coming back. So if you're a Christian and this seems hard for you to believe, then you must 
you must just understand that when Jesus was leaving the disciples, he said to them, you know, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. And it's understandable why those men could not bear the revelations that the Lord said that he still had to share with them because they were heartbroken that they were going to be losing a man who was their best friend, a mentor, a protector, and someone that they all genuinely loved. But what the Lord was revealing is that there are so many more things to this walk and to this human experience that transcend just being human. There are so many things that we really need to understand for our own self-preservation and to deny these things is to say that you want to participate in risky business in the end times, to deny that there are fallen angels, to deny that there are demons, to deny that there are these demonic entities of a hybrid nature called aliens. That is the name that we popularly know them as, and that is the name that the Lord speaks to me about them as. And so that is the name that I use. And yet I have shared that when I see these creatures close up, I haven't even finished all the the prophecies concerning them. I see sometimes that their skin is a very smooth, but slimy texture. And then some of them have skin exactly like those snakes that are black. So there's a particular snake that is black, that has a very close knitted flesh. It doesn't appear to have scales. That particular snake, I don't know what it's called, but it's black and it looks just like pricey shoe leather. That is what some of them look like. That is what some of these aliens look like. That is how I know. And I said that these things, they definitely are hailing some of them from the reptile kingdom. And they are made, not made by us people, but definitely engineered by someone. And this is all encapsulated in the phrase, the seed of Satan. So today's prophecy, I will just go straight into it. I haven't published it yet on the blog, but this thing this thing strongly affected me, which is why I said I do not like to share dreams in which the Lord puts me in the center of the dream. I'd rather just a general prophecy, but I'm not picking and choosing here. It's the Lord who gives these dreams. And I will say that if the Lord had not spoken to me at the end of this dream, I probably would not be making it public. But he gave me so much revelation and teaching and gave the prophecy a professional name. Some of these things God shares with me, he doesn't give me any professional name, and that's how I know this is just for my journal. But he named this one, and he revealed so much that I really feel it would be cheating the people of God not to share this. And so here goes. It was the end times. It was definitely this time, and yet it seemed to be a little bit further because of where I lived. I lived in a community that was, as it was, it was reflective of many different types of communities that were around us. So I lived in a house and I've shared that sometimes the Lord simply depicts the whole earth to me as a house. I will find myself in some of these dreams living in a massive house. And I live in one room in this house and in this huge house with literally thousands of people, it seems like everybody has their whole, their own room. And then God is showing me this prophecy that I'm giving you celestial is basically going to affect the whole earth. So the prophecy of darkness that will come upon this earth, that is what I saw. I just saw massive buildings, huge skyscraper buildings. Um, and I lived in a building and, and there were other buildings like that. And so that's how it was. I lived in this wide sprawling house and it was just a huge mansion with many big and airy rooms, very, very big. And I lived there with a whole ton of people I don't know. And every house had an administrator. And in the house that I lived, the administrator left suddenly. Either she was removed or she could not handle the pressure of running the house and she quit. And everybody naturally gravitated to me and said, Celestial, you be the leader. And so I became the administrator and the leader of that house. And running this house was hard. This house was one of these, it was like one of these dystopian communities that you see in the end times. They always show it in the movie where everybody has to have a chore because things are not as modernized as they are now, where a single person can live in their house and they have a wash machine or they have, you know, blenders and microwaves and things like that. This house that we were living in required a lot of 
grouping together and working together to make it work. And that is how I know it definitely is not this immediate time that we are living in right now in 2022, because you hardly find communities like that, except with the Ar the Amish and things like that. So I lived there and I was doing the daily rosters. I was assigning the chores, who's going to cook, who's going to clean. And that is how it lived. That is how we lived. And I wanted to have a baby in this dream. So I was not married and I was not with any man, but I was longing for a child. And so I decided to go to these fertilization clinics to help me. So I think it is this, these places where, um, ladies get in vitro fertilization. So IVF. So I decided, let me go there and let me see if they can help me because I want to be a mother. And when I went there, the procedure that they did for me is not normal IVF. Now I have to admit, I do not know what normal IVF is, but I definitely know that it was not what happened to me when I went to this place. The doctor brought me this huge, this really big smoking test tube, something as big as this, almost comical, um, as big as this and long. And it was so cold. The solution in it was so cold that it was making this smoky look like liquid nitrogen. And it was so cold that he had to hold it with a paper towel. So he couldn't hold the glass unless it would have frozen his fingers to it. So he, he brought it to me in a paper towel and he was walking me through the procedure and I was listening and I was looking at the bottom of this test tube because it had a little embryo in it, a little curled up, um, grayish looking embryo that really resembled a dead chicken. You know how, um, when a hen sits on the egg for a little too long, the, the egg sort of begins to turn into a baby bird. And then you, if you crack that egg, you're not going to find a yolk in the albumin. You're going to find a little a little chick that should have been born. And so there was something like that at the bottom of the test tube. And then this man says to me, well, drink this and you'll get pregnant. And I looked at it and I looked at that thing and I thought, well, okay. And I drank it and I swallowed that thing that was in it at the bottom. And then he took the test tube and he patted me and he said, you seem healthy. So, uh, for sure you're going to get pregnant. And soon I went home and because of the busyness of running this house. I forgot about the procedure and I forgot about what I had done. And I just threw myself into this brand new role of house coordinator and our unit was getting along. And the reason I'm mentioning this house is because I saw a lot of insurrection come to other houses. And when the Lord spoke to me about this at the end of the dream, I will explain what the significance of seeing these houses were. So our house was functioning very perfectly and everyone in the house seemed content. If we had any disagreements, we would meet in this big common room and we spoke them out and talked them out until we came to working arrangements. But I saw that other houses were thrown into constant battles and wars. And these are the words that the Lord brought to my heart in this dream. So that is why I'm saying they were not having disagreements. The other houses were thrown into constant battles and wars. Many of the houses were overthrowing their leaders on a regular basis. So in our house, the leader was not overthrown. It is either that she was removed by someone higher than her, or she quit and she left because of the pressure. But in many of the houses, around us, leaders were being overthrown. And if you looked out of the window, you could sometimes see these leaders begging at other houses to say, please let me in, please let me in. They had nowhere to stay. And so when their houses threw them out, they refused to take their orders and they shut their leaders out and their leaders had to go and beg at nearby houses and say, please let me in. And I saw into these houses that there were so many breakaway sects within a house. So a sect would form here and a sect would form here and a sect would form here. And they were staging wars, literally inside the houses. They were separating into factions and staging wars against one another in the same house. And they would have running battles in the house, attacking one another. And sometimes these battles from inside the house spilled out into the outside property. And then we in our house were able to watch them fighting in their yards and on their property and in the streets outside. 
And so I saw into the spirit, the Lord showed me into one of the houses and it was completely cut off with clotheslines. So, you know, um, you know, in some houses, especially out there in the rural areas, they don't bother with washing machines and whatever. They still hang their laundry outside on the line to dry. I saw into one of these houses and the house had split itself into multiple pieces with clothesline and clothesline, and they had separated into factions. And some people were holding the bathroom. Some people were holding the kitchen. Some people were holding, um, you know, important areas of the house, like the master bedroom and the master suite. And they separated the house using light blue cloth. So it was light blue cloth dividing this house so that people who needed the kitchen, people who needed access to food could not get it. People who had managed to capture the master bedroom, maybe where they had the TV and stuff could not get there. People who needed the, the bathroom could not get there. And it was such a difficult thing to see. And so while all this was going on, this pregnancy that I had taken was growing, but I was not paying attention to it and time was passing. And then one day a friend came to visit me, a male friend came to visit me and I was so happy to see this friend of mine. And I said, Oh, do come in, do come in. It's nice to see you. And when this man greeted me, he looked at me and he said, it's almost time now, celestial, you'll soon be a mom. And I looked at this man and thought, Oh, right. That procedure I had. But then I thought, how, how does he know this? How, how can a man of all people tell just by looking at me? Because the people I live with are oblivious. They cannot tell. So how does this man know? But anyway, he came in and we were talking one thing to another. And then being curious, I said, can you tell me about pregnancy? Because this man not being a Christian. He was not a Christian, but he did have a girlfriend and she had had his child. And so this man had observed the stages of pregnancy close up. So he was telling me about them. And I was listening with such interest as he was telling me about this woman who had had his child and all the changes that happened to her body and her mood. But then again, he looked at me and he said, something is not right with you. Something is not quite right with you. Your belly is all wrong. Your belly is the wrong shape. And so I just, this is just a dream. So please just hold your horses because it's just the Lord depicting in his own way. When God is giving many of these dreams, he has a point that he wants to get across. And my job is to be true to what he showed me without being forced to edit it because I think people might be squeamish or this person might be offended. I'm not here for all that. This is a channel where I'm doing the Lord obeisance, which means complete obedience according to the best way that my spirit is led. And so if you are able to listen, then listen. And if you're not, well, you know what you can do. And so I just, I opened my shirt the minute he said that. So I just opened my shirt and I looked at myself in surprise. And I have to say, and I'm going to be quite frank, this dream was extremely traumatizing for me. It was so traumatizing for me because it was one of those dreams where there is no clue whatsoever that you are dreaming. There was no hint that this is just a dream. This is no, there was no hint that this hasn't really happened to you. When I opened my shirt, what I saw on myself sent me into a tailspin of hopelessness and terror as an adult female Christian woman. I thought to myself, how have I come to this place? How is this? What has become of my Christianity? I opened my shirt and right here from the throat up until my belt buckle was the back of an alligator. Whatever I had in me had, was, was manifesting itself and making me the mother to have the tendencies of an alligator. Just a moment. Let me fix the, fix the lighting, please. I will describe as closely as I can following the notes that I've taken from the dream, what happened. So this person said to me, something is not right with you, celestial. Something is not right. Your belly is the wrong shape. And I pulled open my shirt. And the first thing, let me go in tandem. What I saw is that the part where a woman is pregnant, this part that begins to change, I saw that my belly was not in the right shape. It was banded about here all across my back. 
with something that looked like Kevlar. So what, what, what the guys are using when they go to war or what they use underneath their clothing to, to prevent the penetration of bullets and sharp objects, that, that bulletproof vest, my belly, this entire area, I was about three or four months. It was the same. It was the kind that you can still hide under clothing and none of the people you live with will know. My skin was so plated. It had become armor plated in that area with an impenetrable wall of muscle around me completely. And then from here, all the way up to my belt was the little raised bumps and markings that you find on the back of an alligator or crocodile. There was no mistaking this because I know the terror that I felt when I looked down and saw these, all this that you would find if you go on safari on the back of those animals. And it ran from here down in a stripe from right underneath my chin, all the way to my belt. And I was terrified. It was my own skin that looked as if there was an alligator underneath pushing through. And I thought to myself, I knew instantly this thing that I am carrying is Nephilim. This thing that I am carrying is other. This is no human baby. And I just felt despair. I felt the kind of despair that only someone coming to this realization with the knowledge that comes from God. You see, there are people out there who do not know that this is happening. They do not have the knowledge that comes from God. And I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but I, as a person who knew this, and as a person who teaches this, I was despairing. I was, I was despairing in my heart to an almost hopeless level because I was thinking, Lord, how have I come to this? How how is this where my Christianity has ended up that I am the mother of this thing? And then on top of that, please listen, because the teaching in this will make this dream, uh, more, more palatable for some of you on top of that, the logo for the transformers appeared on my chest. Remember that this dream is not called a walk through the park with celestial. This dream is entitled by the Lord Jesus Christ, iron mixed with clay, the mighty men. And if you want to know about the mighty men, you will find out about them in Genesis chapter six, verse four, where it is talking about the children that the fallen angels birthed with women. And it says, and these were the mighty men, the mighty men of renown. It means men who are famous for great feats, great works, the kind of man who can tear a lion in two with his hands, like Hercules. And so this logo for the transformers, the head of Optimus prime to those of you who may know the logo for the transformers appeared on my entire torso in a ridge of raised skin. And so it basically looked like someone, you know, if someone cuts with a razor after the skin heals, it heals in a raised ridge. It will not heal flat. Wherever skin is cut, suddenly it heals in a line. It looked like someone had cut me all here, creating the head of the transformer. Now, if you can imagine yourself a female, all you're expecting is a child. And instead you're getting a hardened Kevlar tummy. You're getting an alligator flesh appearing right in the middle of your chest and you're getting Optimus prime. All these things was happening to me as this friend of mine was watching. And what happened is he said nothing. He stared at me and I was crying so hard and I began to, I guess it was just a desperate move. I began to try and tear, tear this belly out of myself, which of course is not possible. But when I tore, my skin came off and the first thing that appeared was a full color portrait of Batman, the superhero full color portrait of Batman. So I tore and my skin caught in my fingers and came off and imprinted on my belly was a full color. I think it's Marvel, a Marvel head and portrait picture of Batman. And I said, no, 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 no. And I 
tore my skin again. And what appeared is a full color portrait of Wonder Woman when she's in the middle of warfare while, fl while flying, gold cuffs flashing. And I thought to myself, no, no, I was weeping in desperation. I tore at my belly again and my belly turned round into the shape of Captain America's shield with Captain America's face in the middle in the middle of it. And I was hysterical by this point, but I did not dare to tear again in case Superman showed up or the Joker or whoever. And I was hopeless. And this man sat across from me and he looked at me and he said only one thing. This never happened to my girlfriend. I don't know what you're having. And I was hopeless. I was crying and then suddenly the Lord, merciful God, he pulled me out of that experience and I started checking myself with all my strength and I thought, Lord, this kind of dream, Lord, this kind of dream, it is too real. I cannot tell that it is not happening. And the Lord began to speak to me and I really hope that the listeners of the Master's Voice, whoever find this video, if you've made it this far, please listen. The Lord said, this is not a vision of the future. This is a revelation of what is real. This is a revelation of reality. Women all over the world are bringing forth the Nephilim right now. Children that perfectly conform to the ancient requirements of the mighty men of old. The superheroes that people love so much are being born all around you right now and they will form the end times army of the beast. Now, as I go through this prophecy, I'm going to share from other experiences that the Lord has given me things that I basically swore that um, unless I had to, I would never publish them. Uh, and one of them is just based on the fact that when I was younger, I always used to wonder who these people are in Revelation that are so hardened that no matter the punishments God brings upon the world, these people did not repent, but instead they cursed God the more. Because when you read the book of Revelation and you're not reading it with you know, the usual terror or, oh, it's too scary or, oh, our pastor never taught us this. But if you just as a mature adult, open your Bible and go to the last book, the only book in the Bible that promises us a blessing, if we read it, if you go to Revelation and you start to read it, you will notice that humanity appears very hardened in the last days. And I, and I know that people are hardened because I see them now when they come here and how they behave. But I'm talking about a kind of harden that is an Olympic level of hardness, as in nothing that God does. The seas are boiling and wormwood has poisoned a third of the drinking water and people get so thirsty that they drink that water and die. But the thing is that they die cursing God. And I always used to wonder, who are these people that are so hardened and cannot receive correction and cannot repent? And these, these are some of the people that are coming out of female wombs today. I really had to pray to the Lord before I brought this prophecy because I'm talking primarily to the women. I have things to share about what God has showed me, even about the men. But what what I'm saying to you is that women of the world, you are the one who births the generations. This thing that God has given you, this entire edifice, it is not so much for your pleasure, even though the Lord understands that part and he has made us to find that kind of pleasure in intimacy, in a condoned marriage of men and women. But this is a responsibility of the generations Adam was so deliberate when he named his wife. He didn't call her Becky or, you know, whatever. He named her Eve. And then he gave the meaning of her name. He said, because she is the mother of all living. And you have to see how prophetic that is because at that moment, there weren't anybody around. It was just him and that one woman, the first man finally had a partner. And yet he gives her a name that will echo for generations. She will be the first to carry out this tradition of birthing that is only given by Yah to the female of the species. But the Lord is saying that women right now are using this incubator of life to bring forth what they don't know. And how is that happening? Right away, the Lord is speaking. 
because of fornication, because of the lust of human beings and their refusal to keep my law, because of impiety and lust of the flesh, the enemy flourishes among you. By deception of the enemy to mingle in the population, to deceive men and women into mating with them, marrying them, even fornication for one night or in adultery with them, the seed of Satan is being conceived in the end times to form a mighty end times army for the beast. You have only seen some of their forms in this dream, Celestial. Many shown to you are the variations coming forth, but I say to you, there are endless more that your eyes have not seen. And so when the Lord was speaking to me about this part about fornication, I spoke a little bit about it in yesterday's video. When I was saying that many parents out there, when they listen to this channel and they hear the words that the Lord is bringing forth, they're feeling offended. And yet they do not know that their underage children are so fallen that they are not only partaking in sexual activity, which dishonors the body and offends against God's law, but the children are now so fallen and so in such a deplorable state, even grown women, this is mothers of people. When their husbands go to work, they put these camera on and they enter into chat rooms and share their secrets with the world for money. And these apps pay them very well because there is no limitation on how many people can enter these chat rooms and view you doing things to yourself or with a partner in the privacy of your home. The Lord has often said that fornication has overflowed the earth and that it causes the earth to look like a slop bucket before him. I've shared about the bucket that I saw in heaven that was filled with what I can only call slop. It was this gray, mushy, like disgusting, filthy, stinking oatmeal and a bucket. Somebody kicked that bucket over in heaven and it washed across the entire earth, defiling it with every form of sexual immorality that you want to think of. And this stink, this stink in that vision was incredible. It rose up from the earth to heaven and was so offensive. And that stink, that water, it could not sink into the earth. It formed stagnant pools everywhere. And this is what God is talking about. So one of the visions that I saw is I saw young girls when they're in the YOLO stage of their life, even grown women in their thirties and forties are still doing this now. And you get dressed up in the tiniest things that you can, and you get your hair done and make yourself pretty. And I saw them go out. It looked like 20 somethings and they went out to a dancing place or a club. And when they went there, it was almost as if they were playing a game of choose your partner. Each young girl went up to a man and pulled him in a suggestive fa fashion, had fun with him in the club. And then each one took him home for the night. So it was about five friends that took five men home for the night. But here is the thing after they had put, performed the intimate act, Every single man got up, dressed, and walked out the door. Not a single one of them stayed behind. Very good-looking men. They all got up, got dressed, and walked out. And the Lord said to me, Celestial, those are all Nephilim. Those are all agents. Their purpose is singular to spread their seed as far as they can. And I saw that some of the girls went back to the same nightclub after a few days because they really wanted to see those men again. Obviously those men won't call. This is what the Lord was showing, that they will not call. They will not make contact. They are not looking for relationships. They are looking for wombs. And females of this generation have certainly stopped being women and have just become available wombs. You think that you are on whatever these pills are that can prevent pregnancy. That's right. Because your level of discernment is at the point where you actually think that a physical medication is going to work against the sperm of a crocodile or the sperm of something that was living before your entire family line came into being. This is not going to happen. 
These men are looking for strategic places to plant their seed. And once they are done with that, they walk out and the chances are very high, extremely high that single motherhood is in your future, except that you do not know what you are bringing forth. And that is what the Lord was showing me. I will get to it. This is what he was showing me because in this dream, I went to a clinic in a clinic. They're not going to give you something to drink. Maybe this will be something of the future, but maybe the Lord did it that way so that I could see what was being put into me. You go to the clinic and you ask for tall and blonde and handsome and a doctor. And they say, you know, we have that on file, but you have no idea truly what they're bringing to you. They might bring those descriptions and give that to you and you go home with your child. And I'm not saying that this procedure is inherently wicked. I am saying that we are living in an age where the sons of God are way less intelligent than the sons of Belial, the sons of Satan, and that there are so many loopholes and so much leeway for the devil to corrupt anything and cause harm to people, saved people and unsaved people. Do not think that Satan makes a distinction. Do not think that Satan is only going to go after the people who are in the world. It can still happen to someone who knows and loves the Lord. And so the Lord says, because human beings are so lustful and they refuse to stop practicing sexual immorality. The word he used is impiety. Impiety means a state of complete looseness. Anything goes, anything is okay because pleasure is the ultimate goal. This doesn't only go for sexual practice. This goes for anything else, pursuing money to the neglect of your family, to the neglect of yourself, pursuing anything that takes you over where it's a don't care attitude. That is what impiety is. And in a, in an environment like that, Satan flourishes so much that I cannot even express it in words on any video. And so the Lord said, I'd only seen some of the forms. He said, you only saw some of the forms. Now, some of the forms I spoke about was seeing the Batman and seeing the Wonder Woman and seeing uh, the Captain America. In fact, after Captain America's head appeared, something else appeared on my belly and it was written the Winter Soldier, the Winter Soldier. I haven't had time to look and find out what exactly a Winter Soldier is, but after the Captain America head appeared, it went away and when I was sobbing, my belly changed and it was written the winter soldier. And that is when my friend looked and said, that never happened to my girlfriend, Celestio. I do not know what you are having. And so the Lord continued. He said, serpents in human skin, mermaids in human skin that have transformities transformative abilities in water as soon as they are out of your eyesight. Creatures from the deep beyond who hold a human shape, they are undetectable to the eye unless my spirit exposes them to you. He said, women have borne monstrous beings and yet they held them to their breast and they loved them as if they were real children and they have never known what they gave birth to. These are the super soldiers of the future. The mighty men that I told you of long ago would make their return to the earth and overrun it with their wars and their vengeance. The plan of the devil is to make this world a slave planet with humanity as the slaves. If I, God, did not shorten the time, there would be no flesh that would survive coming through these times that the evil one has envisaged for humanity. I shared that one of the first things that I experienced when the Lord began to bring me into this truth in 2012, 2013 was I had a dream and I saw these very huge Viking looking men way up in the heavens, way past where the sky is blue. The sky was black and there were no stars. It was just black sky. And I saw these holes begin to burn in the sky as if someone was pressing a cigarette on a black rubber tablecloth and the sky just pulled away and formed these fiery red holes. And in each hole was a man like this. And they were staring down at the earth with so much anger and so much rage. And I cried out in the dream, 
O Lord, the mighty men, the mighty men of old, the mighty men are returning. Go back, go back. And I wanted them to go back through these portals. At the time, I was not even studying Genesis chapter six. I had no idea what I was saying. And it is only because I was praying to the Lord that he began to teach me himself what he was talking about. He says, women have brought forth creatures that look exactly like children, held them to the breast and fed them, loved them and brought them up thinking that they were children. And yet they never, the women never knew what they were giving birth to. Serpents in the human skin. I spoke of the Naga in a recent video mermaids in human skin. Now I've shared on the master's voice that, and I'm glad that this is a channel that people from all over the world can watch because here in America, you will hear me say mermaid and you will begin to struggle with unbelief. And yet a person from Haiti or in any of the African countries will hear me and go, yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our parents told us about that by the time we were five. And this, I think, is the mystery of Christianity. Christianity is perceived so differently because in the West, it is so one-dimensional. It is just taught one way. Jesus just loves you and he loves you and he's just going to keep loving you no matter what. And there's nothing to be afraid of because the shed blood of Jesus. And yet, if you just cross the border to Mexico, those people are bringing blow torch approach to Christianity, at least not in the Catholic churches, but in the one that practice Christianity as it should be practiced. They are bringing a different faith. You cross into other nations and you see pastors who have been forced to revisit their theology because of what they see happening to their members. I cannot recount, especially in the years that I've been counseling people, where a person would pop up in my social media inbox and tell me something that has been troubling them for nine and 10 years. And their pastor is like, oh no, that's, that's, uh, um, you shouldn't worry about that. I don't think it means anything. And a woman is telling you that a creature is touching her at night. There is something sleeping with you as a woman or sleeping with you as a man. You wake up and you can feel the transgression upon your flesh. You wake up and there is evidence that there has been some type of involvement. And yet you're living in your house alone and your pastor is telling you, no, I think it's all in your mind. Of course, he's going to tell you it's all in his, in your mind because he doesn't have the faintest clue of what the scripture says when it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our enemies are not all wearing skin and bone. And so when these things come out, people are struggling in credulity and yet other people make the transition so seamlessly because they know that if you are not awake to these spiritual realities, woe unto you, serious woe, because those type of people who don't even have a clue, who don't even have this information in their paradigm, it is, you are the front line that can fall simply because of ignorance, simply because of unpreparation for knowing that these things are real and that there must be a strong countering of them by faith and the full armor of God, the sword of the word of God. Because this form of Satan will not for, fall easily. The unseen fo form that people struggle against in deliverance doesn't fall easily. Now, how much more if God is saying that they have human form and they take tangible shape? So he said again, these are the children of power that I revealed to you. The ones that are kept in underground basements for training and development of their powers, as I have shown you by prophecy. They are born with these abilities and they are quickly sought out by the U.S. government for use in wicked agenda and experiments. Many of them are bred in captivity, meaning that they are the product of willing mothers who offer themselves up for science and to further, further the agenda of their father, Satan. These children are deliberately engineered this way, and from birth, they are monitored for revelation of their powers. Their masters are waiting for their powers to grow and show themselves, but if they don't, there is intervention to make this happen. 
Some are bred in captivity, but a greater number of these beings are appearing in the wild, meaning that there are women out there who are fully part of this program. So these super soldiers that God is talking about are taking all different forms. Some are coming with I would call it animal kingdom power. So when the Lord is talking about the mermaid ones and he's talking about the serpent ones and he's talking about the wolf ones, such as I spoke of in the recent super soldier video, then definitely these ones are coming, showing the animal part of their nature, but they can also hold a human form, a human shape, but this is what they really are. Yet there is a prophecy on the master's voice called God said, and in that prophecy, God revealed in depth about programs involving little children. The first that I had heard of it from the Lord, little children with astonishing powers, children who can levitate ch chairs, children who can levitate um, tables, children who can bend metal, and none of this is involving their hands. Instead, in fact, I saw in the vision, one little child, you can it's very hard to tell these children if they're boy or girl, because they've been working with these children since they were little. And when I saw them, the only way you can tell if they're boy or girl is, is by the little underwear. They would let the children have either pink underwear or blue underwear. This is how you would know it was a child, but they were so young that it was at that stage where girls and boys are still flat and you can't tell any difference. And I saw one child possibly a girl who had been made to do the same experiment so often that she was filled with so much anger that when the engineer or the technician walked into the room, she picked him up and she slammed him against that bunker wall with so much force that everything in him splattered. All his organs just mashed up and blood came out of his eyes, out of his nose, out of his mouth, probably out of his ears, and he died on the spot. And I saw, you know that observation glass where they watch? I saw that there were people outside of that glass in lab coats, and they were very calm and did not care that that man had been sp splattered to death. They were writing down something on their pad, probably about how much the girl's strength had increased or whatever. And so God is talking about them, and he called these children children of power that are kept in the basements for training and development right here in the United States. And some of them are born in captivity because their mothers know about the program and their mothers sign up for the programs and say that they want to serve science. There are many women out there that hold all sorts of ideas about the greater good and what they feel the greater good is. And so they sign up their wombs um, to breed these children. And these children I saw, they're very underfed. They're extremely thin. They're very silent and somber, glum and unhappy children because they barely get rest because they're being tested all the time. And now God revealed more. The Lord says that these children's masters quickly want to see, you know, greedy people, greedy people always want to know how much they're getting and, and what everything is worth. And so they're not even willing to let these hybrid children mature into their power naturally. In the movies, Spider-Man is allowed to grow up until a certain point, and then his powers begin to show when he's around puberty or something like that. So these, these natural superheroes that are growing up, they will grow up naturally, and then one day something will happen to them, and that's how their powers show. But here, these children, the Lord says, are subjected to very horrible traumas because the masters that are controlling them and ruling them and keeping them in captivity want to quickly see what kind of powers they have. So let me read to you what God says happened to these children. He says that, the powers that be know that it is the natural human instinct to want to stay alive. And so they experiment on these children in extremely dangerous ways, hoping that when the child perceives danger that can kill coming to them, then their power may be to lift up a table and protect the child with telekinesis or whatever. I don't know what these things are. Whatever power it is that lifts things up and moves them around or bends things or blocks things with a force field, they are hoping that if they subject these children to life-threatening trauma, the children will react and the power will suddenly wake up like in that... Thank you, God. 
Like in that cartoon, The Incredibles, the father, the mother, and the brother and the sister all knew their powers because they were older. But the little baby, Jack-Jack, seemed to have no powers. Jack-Jack was just sitting there and he was just sucking his bottle and making tiny baby sounds because he was a tiny baby and everyone just thought, well, you know, not everybody gets born with the power. And they always used to be kind to the baby. And then it turned out at the end of the movie that the baby had the power to transform his shape. The baby had the power to move metals. The baby had the power to to burst into flame so the baby could become like a human torch. The baby had more power than all his family members combined. And it took a while before that showed up. So just like this, God says that the people keeping these children want to subject them to powers, to, to trauma, to see if the power or the abilities, the superhero abilities will certainly burst out of the child. And the Lord said that, they know that when people are scared or in danger of their lives, the power will burst out automatically to protect the child's life. But some of these children die in these experiments because the people are t who are testing them do not stop the danger. So if they've released 19 dogs to chase this child, they will not stop the dogs when the dogs are getting too close to the child because those dogs may be trained to just eat any form of meat. Doesn't matter if it's McDonald's meat or human meat, they will leap upon the child and tear the child apart because the powers that be studying it is waiting for the child to manifest some power to burn up the dogs or to stop the danger or to stop the car that's about to hit them. And he says that, Sometimes the, po the power, the ability of the child does not kick in and that child dies. And he also said that if a child does not exhibit any powers after they have kept that child and, tr and done trial and error with the child and observed that child for a while, then they say the child is a dud and they say the child is a failure and then they kill them. But the Lord says that sometimes these babies are not born because the parents sign up. Sometimes they are born to an unsuspecting father or a mother who mates with a Nephilim and brings forth a creature that is clothed in skin that has nothing to do with man. I'm going to wind up this prophecy because there are too many things here. In the end, I think you will have to go to the blog and read it. That is what the blog is for. The blog is so that we can get in the habit of reading and studying prophecy, not just listening to videos all the time. So God was saying that sometimes these children that you see in society that people just say, I don't know, the child is so cold, the child has no empathy, the child is just um, born evil. You've heard that phrase, born evil is what he used here. He said, Celestial, you have heard of born evil. Those from the womb who lack normal human emotions, normal human expression, normal human compassion, empathy, care, heart, love, and warmth, and mercy. They lack these things and they cause fear and give other people a chill, those who know them. And he says, these are the Nephilim. And that is because they don't have my soul. They, my heart is not in them. They have no part in man. They have no soul and they cannot know me or ever partake of my goodness. These are the Nephilim. And so all I saw here was I saw a mom and a dad sitting at a table and they were sitting uh, very upright and straight. And they had a nine-year-old boy at the table with them. And this kid was swinging his legs at the table and eating his breakfast. And he was very relaxed and happy. And his mom and dad were sitting there like tin soldiers and they did not touch their food. And the Lord gave me the understanding in my heart that the parents were not allowed to eat until the boy had finished eating and left the table. So what I discerned as God was putting it in my heart is that this child absolutely ruled the home and his parents were terrified of him. And I saw that the woman had had this baby by in vitro surgery because she was barren and her husband also was barren. So this boy was not a combination of at least his father's sperm and then an egg harvested from his mother or a surrogate egg or an egg taken from a clinic. This boy was a completely new creation that the clinic had given them. He was not part of the father. He was not part of the mother and they had received 
without knowing it. One of these that the Lord calls the seed of Satan, one of the fallen. And so this boy of nine absolutely ruled the home. And while it was not made known to me exactly how he terrified his parents, the Lord said to me that this child was a tormentor and his parents feared him greatly. And so he was running the house. So the last thing I will say is that the Lord said, this is taking place all around you, celestial. I am not giving you a future message. And this is not a proclamation. This is the revelation of the sons of God, the angels who took human women and made wives of them, all whom they chose and brought forth great giants and supernatural beings into the earth. As it was in the days of Noah, I tell you, it already is again, not it shall be, it already is again. Tell this to my people for them to be careful who they mix with and mate with in the last days. These beings are all around you. Strange flesh is in the earth mingling with the corrupt men and women of the end, mingling of iron with my clay. The rest of the Lord's words can be found on the master's voice. I am celestial. I did say that this is the kind of prophecy that will provoke a lot of thinking. And the reason is if I sit here and tell you a lie and say, the Lord says this is coming, what that is going to cause is everyone thinking, okay, he says that it's coming. So it's not here yet. So, okay, it doesn't mean me. Unfortunately, I have to say that this thing has been going on since the days of King David, since the days of Noah. That is how far back they mingled. And those bloodlines are running in the population today. So I know there will be, how can we know? How can we know? Brothers and sisters, by this time, you should understand that you can't know anything unless you seek it out with prayer. I've noticed something about this generation of Christians, and it is that just spoon feed me, hand me the answer. I'm a busy person. Give me a quick answer. Reply my comment. In this, this life, you are not going to have these things. Who are you going to ask when the lights go out and this, and this world falls into the chaos that I'm speaking of here? You have a job. I have one. You go out about your daily life. I do the same. I'm not talking about things that you can process as you sit on your bed or your couch or you're listening to me as you drive on your way to work. I'm talking of the time that comes after the amenities are gone, after this government begins to monitor people according to something that the Lord called a credit society score or a social credit score, where you as a free American or you as a free Nigerian will have to do things according to the government unless it will lower your points. And when it lowers your points, you will not be able. I saw a couple, they got married in the future. They wanted to go on holiday. Fine. The man had enough money saved up and he wanted to fly him and his wife first class, but he did not have enough credit society score points to be allowed to purchase first class tickets. So he could afford them, but his social credit score said that you are not worthy of flying first class and they had to fly I don't know what it's called, coach. They had to fly, fly coach. This is the kind of stuff that God is sharing with me person to person as a friend. This dream troubled me because I knew no matter how I bring it out, it is going to cause a shaking in the hearts of people. And the prophecy comes to bring you to your knees. Prophecy doesn't come to get you typing and asking questions because the human being that you're asking questions, even if I would have the answers, what makes people think that God is releasing me to grant those answers? I do exactly what God says. What you see on this channel is determined by God. I am not speaking because people have, why doesn't she talk about this more? And why doesn't she bring up this topic? Why is she avoiding this topic? I am not taking suggestions from the listeners of this channel. I have a suggester. He is the one who sends me to speak. If it's here, he spoke it. If it's not here, he is not interested in it. Even if it is your favorite topic that consumes you and that's the only things, the only verses you are searching for in the scripture. 
He has an agenda that he is working according to. And I am so tuned into that agenda and that agenda alone. This message, there is no easy way to hear it. There is no easy way for a heart to just hear it and go, well, not me, not me, because there's no way to know unless you get down on your knees and you seek your maker for clarity. That is it. We cannot get away from seeking God. These prophecies come and I have, I have determined long ago that I understand why the Lord speaks this way. He speaks this way so that those who hear will ultimately know this is beyond me. I have to go back to the Father's house. There is no way that I can exist in the world this woman is talking about without Jesus Christ. If anyone is wise, they've already figured it out by now that these messages are calling you back to the master's feet, to Jesus' arms. Because if anyone thinks that they can do this on their own with a Smith and Wesson, you could not be more wrong. You could not be more off the mark. He knows exactly what he is saying. And he is saying, come to me. You go to God with your questions. You want to discern what your bloodline is? (laughs) Ancestry.com is not going to tell you. Jesus will tell you who and what you are and who and what the people around you are. That is all I can say. Thank you for being with me. These messages are not easy. They're not easy to receive. They're not easy to hold. This is not a game for me. This is not a subscriber-thon. I think often of the fact that even as this channel grows, there's people's souls, there's people's souls that are coming here. Who can take that balance lightly? Who, who thinks this is just a, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. This is our eternal souls, your soul, my soul. I'm, I'm doing the job assigned to my soul and I'm so careful of it because I know I will give an account for every word spoken because it's going into ears that are hearing. And so it must be carefully brought out exactly as I received it. So God bless you and God be with you and the Lord give you peace, keep you in his shalom. If you go to him, Christ Jesus has the answers that every soul is looking for. That's why he's called the desire of all nations. It's not just because he's so handsome and beautiful. Jesus is the desire of all nations because every heart, every heart that is man anyway, he is the ultimate desires of desires. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.